All right, today we're going to be doing a little bit of work on this Traxxas Max. We got a few different things we want to install um, to improve the, <clears throat> excuse me, overall handling of the vehicle itself. Um, one of the things we're going to install is the um, steering blocks. Those are going to go on. Those are aluminum. Those are going to protect the. Um, those are going to protect our bearings a little bit. We're also going to put the stub axles on. Traxxas brand again will protect our bearings a bit in the uh, back end of the truck. Um, we also have our C hubs. This is going to give us um, a little more stability in the front, a little more strength around the um, around the upper and lower suspension arm. I'm um, sorry about the glare on these parts. Not exactly the best place to be filming video. Um, we have our longer steering links. Those will be going on. Um, wide max dog bones. We're going to get those installed as well. Um, we already have still CVDs on there, so we just have to swap the dog bones out. And then, of course, um, you know, wide max kit, um, which we really don't. Only thing we really need out of this package is the longer arms, because we've already got still CVDs. We got the dog bones to replace those. We got our links. Um, so we won't be using the plastic um, drive shafts that come with the Max kit, uh, the Wide Max kit. Um, so we won't be using the steering links or the, um, the plastic drive shafts. Um, so we basically just got to get these arms changed out. Should be pretty simple. Uh, we got to pull these skid plates, pull a piece off the front. Uh, we're going to do the front end first. I think that's going to be the way to go on this guy. And um, Hopefully we'll have a pretty easy, pretty quick install. The only thing I think is going to take some time is, I don't even think it's really going to take that much time, but it's going to be uh, rebuilding these dog bones. Um, the one end that has to be kind of taken apart and pieces added to it and whatnot, but that'll be fine. We'll get to that when we get there. Um, don't exactly have the best setup to video this for everyone, so I'm going to try to walk you through as best as, best as I can. Um, we have our hex drivers. That is not the right size, so we're just going to sit there over here. Um, we're going to go ahead and get this, uh, get this top plate taken off, this front skid taken off, and um, go from there. Again, not the right size. Man, you think I've never done this shit before. Jeez. That is not the right size either. Man, I'm feeling like a real rookie right now, but that's alright. That's okay. I don't mind. Again, not the right size. Not the man, I'm just an idiot. That's okay. That is perfectly okay. Alright. Good time. There we go. There's the right one. All right, we're good. Now we can get going. Sheesh. All right, so get this piece off. So we're going to pull these four screws first. We're going to set those over here on our stand off to the side, just, just off the camera. You can't see it, but it's a good place to keep stuff so you don't knock it off in the floor. It would be nice if I had a mat, but I have not bothered to buy one yet. That is on me. Um, but the mats come in super handy because a, a lot of the nicer mats have little divots and whatnot to put, put your hardware as you're pulling it off. So once we get this off, this guy should, I believe, pop right off. It's been a minute since I've done this, so kind of going by memory here. No, we still got to get this front screw right here out. Get this guy going here. There we go. Now we're moving. So this is just going to be the front screw. It goes right in the front of the, um, uh, where the bumper attaches down at the bottom. I think we're probably going to have to flip this guy over and pull that piece off as well, but we'll see. Maybe not. Like I said, been a minute since I've done this, so. 
unlike a lot of you, you Max guys out there, I'm not, I'm not unfamiliar with the vehicle, but at the same time, I don't spend a whole lot of time taking it apart and whatnot. For the most part, this thing is pretty much all stock. I mean, we've got VG springs on it, on the suspension. Um, wow, what is keeping this on right now? Wow, I'm feeling like a real rookie right now. Loving it. So, hey, learning experience. Yep, there we go. Yep, that, that piece is... Uh, yeah, we're going to pull this off. Get this guy out of the way. But, again, I don't spend a whole lot of time working on this truck. Um, most of the runs we do are in fairly open areas. Pretty flat, uh, not a lot of air time. This truck has not been hit with a whole lot of air time. Um, there, oh, hey, there we go. We got all kinds of shit falling off. That's good. That's what I like to see. And then we can pop this guy right on out. There we go. Now we're in. And let me see if I can find what uh, everything just fell out. Um, there's one piece. Pretty sure something else fell off too, but I'm not sure what, and that concerns me. So let's see. Okay, so we have this piece here that comes off the front uh, that holds the A arms, uh, the bottom arms in place. Um, so we're going to set that over here to the side. Then we're going to remove this metal plate. That takes care of that. And then uh, to get the A arms off, I'm just going to pull this pin. And that's going to disconnect those from uh, the front bulk. And. We're pretty much got that part taken care of. Now we just need to get the other arms off. Uh, we're going to do some serious disassembly here. So we got here. Is this the right screw for this? Yep. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get go ahead and disconnect the shock from this side. Should come loose. And once we have this guy out of the way. Alright, so that shot is going to pop out of there. Let that guy lay there. We don't have to mess with the bottom of it since, uh, like I said, we're. Um, <clears throat> like I said, we're not doing. Um, not doing the springs, so we can leave the shocks in place. Uh, get something else out of here real quick. So once we get one side done, everything else it'll it'll move a lot quicker. This is just for the most part learning process. So we're gonna need this little guy to pop the. We're using the captured hinge pins, so we're gonna need to pop those out. We're doing the front first because it's going to have the the most that we're going to have to do to it. And this is our piece, uh, our screw that holds the the captured hinge pin in place. Then we can just take this little guy and poke right through here. Get that guy to pull out. There we go. Keep those two together, and that's our bottom arm. So we'll set that off over here. We don't need that. Um, we're going to go ahead and pull this carrier off. Let's see. Get underneath here. Yeah, this is one of the pieces we're going to be changing out. So we're just going to get everything disassembled real quick. And uh, get that guy going. And I've got another hinge pin I need to pull. So we've got our steering arm pulled off now. Get this hinge pin out. Captured hinge pins, guys. If you have not installed these yet, these things are fantastic. When you are 
out and around, bouncing through the yard, bouncing through the field, wherever you run, sending it to the moon, whatever. Um, that guy will, uh, you will not see your, uh, your pins backing out. Definitely keeps them in place very, very well. So let's go ahead and pop this guy through. There we go. And there goes that piece. So that was one of the pieces we wanted off. Um, this also has the captured hinge pin in the top here, if you can see it. So actually top and bottom. So we need to pull these off. These actually use the caps. So let's move this guy over here. Try to keep these things together. You don't want to, don't want to lose these guys. So there's my cap, my hinge pin. I need some pair of pliers to pull this guy out. It's going to be a little tight. So we're going to use these. Pull this guy on out. We'll put that with our cap since that's going to go on our steering block. Got to pull this other one out. Steering block or C hub, excuse me. So these guys will pop right off. Grab a hold of these pins and pull them out. There we go. Keep those together. Now we've got this piece apart. So now that's one of our C hubs off. Take that and kick it over there. And then this will be the part that will be. Oh, we got to pull this guy off. Forgot about that. is always the fun part. Grab a hold of these. We don't want to scuff these up, but we got to get this little grub screw out. That way we can pull the, the hub off. Almost. We're definitely going to do these one side at a time because we don't want a bunch of hardware floating around. We don't know where it goes, anything like that. There we go. Got the hinge pin out. We are good. Okay. Where's my little guy to poke this pin through? Kind of push that pin out, pull the hub off, and we should be able to yep, slide that right on out. So now we've got this piece good to go. So, this will be the fun part, is getting this pin out of here. I believe we just have to, I should probably look this up and see what the heck I'm supposed to do with this. Because I think there's going to be a little more than just this pin holding in place right there. Oh, nothing there. Da, 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 da. I already know you guys are gonna roast the hell out of me on this uh, on this video, so I uh, hey, it, I'm, I'm perfectly okay with it. Fully expect it to happen. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and leave that as is, and put our arms on real quick. Go ahead and get this guy open. Twisty ties. Gotta love that. This is one part of the Wide Max kit. This is your springs, your steering links, and your extended uh, plastic axles. We won't be using any of this. So um, just toss that to the side. The only thing we need out of here are the arms. So we're gonna go ahead and get those pulled out. Set them over here to the side. More twisty ties. More twisty ties, more twisty ties. Alright, almost got the arms off of here. Let's see, there we go. Alright, the arms are free. We have freed the arms. Now the question is, which one goes where? I'm kidding, I know which one goes where. This is a uh, 
definitely not does not go there. That guy definitely does not go there. This guy definitely does not go there. Here we go. This is going to sit right up here. We're gonna that'll get screwed back into place there. We're on the front end right now, so um, honestly, I like to keep my front end on the outer hole on the arm. Um, some people may have a different preference. Um, that's just me personally. Uh, let's see. Let's get this other arm off. And I think we'll be good to go as far as this. And this is another hinge pin. We'll keep all these together. But yeah, like I was saying before, if you have not installed these hinge pins, man, it is uh, definitely something you want to look into. I mean, just these things hold in place like you would not believe. And you don't have to worry about your screws backing out when your truck's bouncing up and down all over creation, so... Alright, these guys are going to be pretty simple to put back in, so we're just going to go ahead and just drop this guy on here. And keep that brace in place. Do I really not know what the fuck I'm doing? No, I really don't. Jeez. Man, I can't wait to see the comments on this video. It's going to be amazing. Alright, so that guy's in place. Look at that. Make sure it goes all the way in so that hinge pin or this uh, capture piece is in place and can screw in. Until it's nice and tight. Alright, so one arm's done. <clears throat> so, alright, so fun part. Let's get these bearings pulled out. I'm gonna be good and greasy. Get that bearing pulled out. That piece is out of the way. Bye bye. next let's figure this out so we've got to get this pin out of here I'm pretty sure there is a that's just gonna slide right out pull this guy out and that's that's our old dog bone it's done we'll get that guy out of there so we're gonna pop open our wide max dog bones put this guy in place squeak a little bit but I'm gonna slide this guy right down in there and let Dog's acting crazy. Yeah, the pin goes through that piece. Uh, that's good to know. Okay. And so that turns. Yep, we got good good motion there on this guy. I should probably turn this camera a little bit. Here we go. So yeah, we've got good motion on this guy. It's in place. Um and then the bearing, of course, when we install all that, that'll hold the pin in place, so we won't have to worry about that too much. Um, this guy is going to go up here. I ain't going to worry about that just yet. Um, what else do we need next? So, let's go ahead and put our C hooks together. Pop these open. Maybe, possibly. 
it's not all the foam, but... I think it's included with this packaging. Mm -hmm. Toss that off to the floor there. That's not a C-hub, that's a steering block, but whatever. Y'all know what I meant. Okay, so... I'm going to take this bearing, clean it off a little bit, make sure it's nice and clean. Pop that, guys. Make sure we have the right one first. That'd probably be a good idea. So, it's going to go there. This guy's going to go here, and it lines up. Just like it should, so I think we're good. That's the one for this side. And then, of course, that's... Damn. Yeah, open the wrong thing. That's fine. That's fine. That's, see, roast. Roasted. I'm going to get obliterated on this video. Can't wait. But part of the hobby, guys, is learning your trucks, learning your parts, and honestly, just taking these things out and running the hell out of them. This done here. Da, da, da. A little bit. All right, this comes with. Um, these are going to come with a couple of screws with thread lock on them. I don't believe we're going to be using those because we are using the hinge pins. So, if I'm wrong, we'll figure that out shortly. Actually, I think I might be wrong. This may be replacement screws for the. What do you call it? The um, steering links, but we'll see. Alright, so. C hubs. I'm gonna need the C hubs now. come with captured hinge pins okay and screws with thread lock on them nice call that a win Put back into here. We'll get this guy in place. I think it was one of the longer ones. That was my top and bottom. I don't remember which one it was. I think it was maybe this one, so let's find out. Perfect. So now we're going to screw this guy back into place. just to get them started. Once they start though, they're good to go. There we go. Okay. 
Oh, these are good. <clears throat> And if we screw up, we might be going back to fix some things, but hey, whatever, we'll figure it out. Alright, that's in place. I guess not going anywhere. Alright. Get our aluminum piece in these are identical we are good to go all right so uh, what do we want to do next let's uh let's fit this steering arm in here I believe that's got to be the right one yep that's correct there so we're going to use the um we're going to use the hinge pin set that it came with as opposed to the ones we pulled out since it already has the Loctite and everything already on it. So, might as well. So, we'll dump these out very careful. This is, whoa, hey, what are you, where are you going? Oh, yeah, we need you. So, I'm going to put this dog ball over here. All these takeoffs. I almost screwed that up. Almost screwed that up. So that's going to go through there. This. Oh, so much. This is why you need a better workspace and a better mat. So this piece is going to go through here. We're going to have the slot in there. And that's going to tighten that up quite nicely, I believe. If I can get it worked in here, come on. Uh, it's going to be uncooperative. There we go. And here it is. Much better. Okay, see? We're learning. Learning things as we go. Alright, I'm going to kick these over here because I don't expect to have too much stuff floating around and in the way over here. So we have four screws, four pins. And four of the capture hubs. So, first thing, let's uh, let's drop this top one in. That is in. That guy's in place. Uh, we need one of these capture hubs. It's going to go right there. And then the screw with the. Maybe you can see it. Maybe not. It's already got the Loctite on it. So we're going to drop that guy in there and get it started. And then we're going to go ahead and tighten this guy up. Then we'll do the bottom side. And uh, we should have some pretty clean movement on these guys. So let's get this guy tightened up. All right. So since we're going into aluminum, we can torque down a little harder than we normally would, uh, which is honestly kind of nice. Um, let's get this guy moved in here and get him lined up. There we go. He is lined up. Get this captured pin put on here. Sorry about the camera, guys. I am doing this by myself, so I don't really have anyone that can move the camera around to kind of give you better angles. Um, outside of the roasting that will occur in the comments, feel free to ask questions. Um, but honestly, there's 100 videos out there about how to do this so I don't expect anything other than some well you're a freaking noob learn how to work on your truck so either way I'm okay with it because you know what I am enjoying this so get this guy line started in and then we'll go ahead and tighten it down need some music while doing this but quite honestly if I play any kind of music we'll get hit with a copyright claim so 
we're just kind of stuck with this for now. So we got our dogma. Oh, we got to put our bearings in, which I should have done before I put that in there, but I didn't because I'm an idiot. And now I don't see the larger bearing. So once again, idiot, 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 idiot. But that's okay. I'm good with it. So let's drop this smaller bearing in. That guy's nice and snug. That aluminum's going to protect that bearing. Um, <laughs> shame I can't go back and review the video while we're recording so I can see what I did with the other bearing. Did I set it over here? No, no, no. Yep, I did. Right over here. So I'm going to turn this guy, slide this bearing in here, and pop it down into place. Make sure it's nice and snug. And then we can gently insert this guy and feed this through here oh we popped out our bearing that's all right we'll put that back in once we get this guy once we get this guy all the way in and the, oh, oh there comes the bearing awesome You gotta get these guys lined up damn near height. Perfect. There we go. Now that's in. Now we put this bearing back on. Maybe. Possibly. Maybe not. There we go. Now that bearing's in place. Now we can take this guy and put him back in. Going to put our holds hold um that's going to go through there, our pin. And then we got to put our grub screw back in, so make sure that that doesn't go anywhere. And of course, it's got the Loctite on it already. Get this stuff out of the way, and then slide this guy in here. Make sure our pin is staying even. Pin's not going anywhere. Get that guy torqued down pretty good. Alright, and then we're going to grab our pliers, hold this hub in place. Be careful not to. Alright, that grub screw is in place, so we've got that taken care of. Um, I think now we are good to go ahead and reinstall go ahead and wow that's just gonna keep coming off we can go ahead and put in our I think this is the right one pretty sure it is seems to be not real sure are these exactly the same Yes, they are. All right, there we go. So, let's go ahead and attach the shock to this piece. This is going to be our lower arm. We want this to go through the front hole. Oh, it gives us a little, a little more stability in the front going this route. Some people would disagree, saying it doesn't make a difference, but... Honestly, the Max has kind of funky um, geometry as it is, so this just helps a little bit of stability in the front. Is it a game changer? Absolutely not, but it will help some. So we'll get this guy screwed in. I'm pretty sure that that's yeah, that's going where it's supposed to. So again, like I said, reason the outer holes on this. Um, and then on the back, when we get around to doing that, we'll use the inner holes. So we'll get that nice and snug in there. So that's in place. Okay, so we got that. We got our dog bone rebuilt. That's all good. All right, so... Put this guy up here 
and we can go ahead and put in one of these hinge pins just to kind of hold this guy up here for us. It's not going to do a whole hell of a lot because it doesn't have the front on it, but that's fine. We'll, we'll get around to that shortly. We just want to hold it up in place and then get this piece attached, uh, which is going to be, I don't remember, this guy here. that guy all the way in there and that one should fit all the way through and be flush with the other end and then we have the hold screw that we're going to screw into place over here on this side as that'll keep that pin from backing out on us just the head of the screw is just going to cover just the, the edge of the pin so we won't have to worry about that guy coming out um, dog bone is in place everything seems solid Everything's properly seated. All right, we're good for this side. All right, so we're gonna pull this link here. We're gonna pull this screw out of this link. and get this link done. Since we're already over here. The great thing about the, the tubes links is they are adjustable so if you're not happy with um, the level of toe in or out that you have on your Max, uh, you can take the wrench that comes with them and just turn these and you can you can adjust that pretty easily. So let's grab this pop one of these guys out and go ahead and get this guy installed which these are pretty much identical both sides one side's going to be a little shorter than the other as far as the spacers your longer side here is going to be the one that goes into your bell crank. Let's get that guy worked in there. Maybe, maybe not. This can be a little bit of a pain to get these guys to, to slide in, but once you get them in there, pretty easy to deal with. So there we go. And because we are using the aluminum tubes, we are going to keep the stock bell crank. I know a lot of people uh, prefer an aluminum bell crank. Um, bell crank and servo saver, but uh, we want to keep that weak. We don't want to take away too much of our weak points, too many weak points. So um, we make sure we have somewhere for... Um, flex when we're dashing around outside. And eventually, there we go. Get that guy stuck back in there. Okay, here we go. I think we got this right. And this guy is not wanting to grab for whatever reason. Is that crooked? Like, what's going on? Try this again. Hold on. And then once we get these pieces in place, now the um, steering links also come with these. They have the thread lock on them as well, since they are going to go into aluminum. You're safe to use thread lock there. Um, you typically want to avoid it on plastic parts unless you have thread lock that is made specifically for plastic. Um, other than that, um, I've heard like clear fingernail polish is actually a good option as well uh, to use on plastic, but you definitely don't want to use thread lock on plastic pieces. Idiot. That would be why it's not great. Wow. Y'all have fun with this video, seriously. I'm, I, I can't wait to see the comments. It's, uh, it should be 
somewhat entertaining. All right, so we need our thread lock screws. Get these guys dumped out here. I'm gonna drop these over here off to the side so that we don't get them confused with anything else. And we're gonna take this steering link and fit it in here, maybe. Come on, fella. This is always a good time. Probably should have done this one first, but that's okay. Let's see here. into this and these guys you have to get them pretty much straight in here otherwise they're gonna be a bit of a pain in the ass so all right so that guy oh you were in damn it all right so we're good all right and you'll feel that thread locker grab almost immediately as soon as you start that screw so let's just shorten this guy up so I don't need quite all that Oh look there, my arm popped off again. So you give yourself a little bit of space here to tighten this down. And again, we're going into aluminum so we can torque down a little more than we normally would on the plastic. In theory, this guy's gonna tighten up on us. There it goes. Oh, damn it. Ugh. So let's lift that back up. That's still, the dog bone is still in place. Alright, that guy's good and tight. So we are, we are done with that part. That's all attached, so we can just push this through very gently. You sh really shouldn't push your servo around when it's not attached to anything. Um, so that side is um, that side's done. Um, moving over to this side and uh, get to work on this one. So we're gonna go ahead and pull out our shock screw. And these parts here we had left over, these are from the, the steering knuckles, bearing carriers, whatever you want to call them. Um, we won't need those because we used the other ones that came with it. And those are also captured hinge pins and they are, they are the way to go. Um, then we just need to pull these pieces out. side of this truck. This is going to be a long video, guys. Um, yeah, I apologize for that, but eh, this stuff isn't quick sometimes, so. Push this guy out. Get him out of the way. There we go. We got our lower arm is off. So we put that with the capture screw. <sighs> now let's uh, pull this Top arm off. Actually, let's go ahead and pull this piece off. Hey, jingle bells! It means somebody's outside my front door. Good times. Probably somebody telling me to. Uh, let someone else work on my truck because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. So that's outer and inner capture, um, upper and lower capture pins for that. We can pull that piece off. We'll go ahead and uh, pull this guy off as well. We're going to end up with a little bit of hardware left over considering that Tractors gave us separate hardware for the aluminum parts. That's alright, not a big deal. 
down to normal. Right, so we'll get that guy and put it over there and pull this piece off. And there we go. We got that knuckle off. Um, that C-hub off. I'm sorry. Um, we're good to go there. Um, so let's go ahead and get this uh, upper arm replaced. Since that seems to be the easy part. Oh, oh, where'd my cap go? There's my cap. Alright, so I'll put that with the cap. Pull this arm out, and upper arm is off. Drop that guy off to the side there. Fortunately, these arms are pretty much identical, top and bottom, so not too difficult to figure these guys out. That was one of the cool things about the Max is it is a, it's a very symmetrical, very symmetrical truck. So there we go. We got that piece in. We got good motions. We can pop this cap back on. Tighten this piece back down. Get that guy locked, locked in there. There we go. All right, we're moving. And then, of course, we're going into plastic, so we don't want to over tighten, strip the plastic out. That's not a good thing. I'm go ahead and pull this arm off while we're at it. Since we're already in here, might as well. We already have our arms open. Pull that guy off, toss him over here. Uh, grab our other arm. And uh, get that fitted in place. Man, I'm telling you, everything you buy from Traxxas comes with these little wrenches for adjusting. Things. I mean, anything that's adjustable comes with these crazy little wrenches. Man, I got boatloads of these things floating around. It's kind of nuts. Uh, so let's get this arm on here. So this is going to be the thicker one. They're pretty much identical both sides. These guys will slide right in as soon as you get them lined up like freaking perfect. With you, I'm probably about due for a new bell crank, but that can be done another day. Alright, we got that guy in place. I'm going to do him a screw. We're going to drop this guy down in here and get it started. Make sure we don't look like an idiot on this one. I'll tell you these I mean there's a ton of companies that make them but these ratcheting drivers are phenomenal why you got love them absolutely love them all right so let's pull this guy apart pull our captured hinge pins out and then we'll put together that new dog bone for the for the front pull this guy and put it over here this, take this apart, get that hinge pin pulled out. I'm already starting to get some same parts. I don't know what they go to. Not a good thing. Figure it out. If the truck explodes when we take it and run it later, then we'll we'll know I missed something. All right, so we've got those hinge pins pulled. So we can pull that dog bone out and we're done with this guy because we're going to be replacing it. Um, now to pull out this guy and get a hold of it so we can actually turn it. And I do have that pulled over there to go. Alright, here that guy kind of. This guy 
is in there tight. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's get this guy out of there. Okay. There it goes. Okay, now we got it loosened up. That grub screw's coming. Oh, not quite yet. Almost. Pull this here. See if we can push this pin out. Should be able to pretty easily. That grub screw is in there somewhere. Nope, it's not. It's right there. There we go. We're good to go. All right, so we got that. Now we can pull this guy out. Go ahead and pull our pull our bearings. Kind of want to inspect them, make sure there's no busted seals, too much dirt on them, anything like that. Kind of clean them off a little bit. And we're done with this piece. Toss it off to the side. So now we're going to pull this pin out. And we have just learned that there are extra there is an extra piece in there that we need to make sure we get pulled out of here. Let's get this guy. It's gonna be right there. Alright. I'm pretty sure we put that other one in together properly. Yeah, we did. We're good. Okay, and we're done with that dog bone. Let's throw that off to our takeoff side. Let's grab this dog bone. So we're going to have this piece go in flat side and then slide this guy over and put the pin through the center if it cooperates, which it's obviously not going to. <clears throat> you just have to turn that center piece to get it lined up. Alright, that guy's in. Let's get this get this pin through here. And kind of wiggle it around, see if we can get it to Aha, uh -huh, there we go. Okay, that guy is in. That dog bone is together. We are good. Okay, so next piece. Uh we need our C hub. So first thing, let's put our C hub together. It's gonna go right there. Let's slip our hinge pin back through. It's not the right hinge pin, I do not believe. Let's see. I swear I'm kind of an idiot when it comes to these things, but that's okay. That's okay. About to put the wrong damn hinge pin in. There we go. Get that guy good and flush. That is backwards. That is backwards as hell. Son of a bitch. Roast me. Have fun with it. I know I am. Jeez. All right. Now we're good. Now we're where we're supposed to be. So let's get this screw back in. Hold that piece in place. Make sure we're turning the right direction. That's always good. Get that guy lined up with the hole right next to where the pin goes through. And then you just tighten this guy down and then hold that pin in place. If you've already installed captured hinge pins, then you you know how this works. It's also very similar to how the um, what do you call it? The uh, sway bars work on the, some of the smaller 4x4 models. Alright, so we got that in. That is good. Now we need our go ahead and put this piece together and we're going to use the hinge pins that came with it uh, with the Loctite, 
Hopefully Loctite, like we talked about earlier. And those are gonna Mistake twice. Let's get this guy kicked through here. <clears throat> it might be a little easier just to take this bearing and work it down over over this piece here before inserting into the hub itself. Yes, much easier. Pop this hub over the front here. There we go. Get that guy seated in there nice and flush. And then, uh, got good movement on there. No real resistance. So, slide that guy through. And we'll put this guy together. cover piece, get a blue Loctite screws, drop down in there, get it started, make sure it's lined up, and then we'll tighten this guy down. And of course again, I'm going into aluminum so you can tighten down a little harder than you normally would. Uh, let's get that guy in here. There we go. Alright, so now we got to do our hinge pin on the bottom, which you know, we're working upside down, so it's a little trickier, but not really. Um, kind of want to see what's going on here. Get that piece there. Hang this guy over the side so we've got a little bit of room to work with and then we'll just slip this in here and get it started and then we can tighten it down. Yep, it started right in for us. So we're just gonna hold that guy in place and tighten it down. Whoa ho ho. Whoa ho 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 ho. Stop trying to run off the table on us. Another thing this video is good for is uh kind of shows the uh, a little bit of a need for a uh, proper workspace um, okay oh so we got good motion on this guy turning back and forth like it should so yeah good motion there um, Keeps blanking out on me. There we go. All right. So, make sure this dog bone is in seated properly. There we go. And uh, now we need our lower arm. That's not it. This is it. So, grab our pin for that. Put this guy in place. Um, fit these guys. So this is going to use the it's going to use this hinge pin. I'm going to slip this guy through here. I'm not sure if you guys can see where that's going in. Uh, oh, we missed. Let's try again. There we go. And then that guy should go in flush, just like you see. Then we're going to take this screw here. Screw it into this part. Once it grabs, we're good to go. There we go. And we're 
ึ่งTight. Looking good so far. Get this guy lined up. We're obviously going to use our threaded or blue lock tight screws that, they, that came with them. As soon as we get it lined up. Oh, swing and a miss. There we go. That guy's through there. And now we can get that guy started. And then we can turn this guy a little bit, hang the arms off the side. Sorry, you guys aren't going to have a very good view of this part, but you, you, you know what's going on. So get this guy tightened down. The arms is going to be in place. torque down, lock tight in place, and we're gonna just turn this guy back around here so you have a little, a little better view. Uh, so um, let's go ahead and seat our shock back in. Ah, missed again. And again, I'm putting the front shocks in the outer holes. Uh, there are people that will argue that this is not the correct thing to do, but I've seen more people state that this is the way to go on the front arms. So, and it has worked well for me so far. A lot of people complain about the uh, handling on the Max. I've, without the wide kit, um, never really had an issue with it honestly the main reason I am putting this wide kit on here is I I never put the wide max kit on because I honestly just felt like the truck would be just a big beefy rustler at that point and the more time I've spent with my 4x4 rustler I'm like you know what that's not a bad thing so maybe wide kit would wouldn't be too bad so let's straighten that up very carefully all right and um, we need to put this hub back on let's make sure we get this done so we gotta slide this guy on get this pin through the hole I'm gonna turn that so that hub's not so that pin doesn't slide out Hell, did I use the wrong damn pen? I bet I did. No, I didn't. We're good. Okay, we're good. Whew, got concerned for a second. Gonna get that guy in there nice and nice and flush. I'm pretty sure this other one's flush too, right? Yeah, because I did not check that. Yes, that is good. This guy's trying to fall out because we don't have our grub screw in yet. So, let's get the grub screw in. Wrong side. So, I'm just going to slip this guy in here and get it started. And when it starts to tighten down on us, we'll have to... feels pretty well torqued so let's just grab a hold of this kick these out um, pretty wide so we can get on here and not oh, okay that grub screw is in there about as tight as it's going to get all right we got good motion so all we got to do now is put the front end back on and uh we're going to be done with that part so good motion everything feels good 
Everything's in place, so slip these guys back in. I'm just gonna hold our arms in place. Why do I feel like that's not right? Something is wrong here. Oh, never mind, I know what the issue is. Grr. That piece. There we go. Now we're good. Oh yeah, nice and tight. Way it should be. This piece is going to go on here. I may have to flip the truck over for this. Is that the screw that goes in there? Yes, it is. Oh, where are you going? Don't know where you came from. But that's all right. All right, so let's, uh, let's get this guy put on. We're going to pop our... Uh, Get back in first. You guys able to see this? So just want to get this basically snapped underneath the center skid plate, which is always fun to do. Because honestly, I don't really like having to pull the center skid plate if I don't have to. And in this particular case, you really don't have to. There we go. We are snapped in. I'm gonna slide this back in where that goes. Alright, and then we want to take the right size for that. No, we need the bigger size. That's what I thought. Yep. We're going to need a little bit of length on this one. So, um, when you're putting this back in, you basically just got to reach under here, slip this guy over the two hinge pins that are point, um, that are exposed. And voila. And then you want to turn and just screw the screw back into its slot. And once we'll you fill it grab, should be good to go to let go of that piece. And you feel it kind of start to grab. Tighten it down just a little bit. All right, and that's that. We flip the truck over and pop this screw right down into here where it goes. That is not right at all. screw, sorry. This is going to hold everything in place. Alright, so that's all we're all put back together. We've got really nice motion on these arms. Good and stiff. You can see they're kind of just nice. I think, I think we're good. Now we just got to pop the screws back into the skid plate. That's those four screws right here. Get these guys dropped in. And we not done. We'll be, I mean, we'll be done with the front. So the back is uh, pretty much the, it's not much different, honestly. So get this done pretty quick. Truck will look pretty. I'm going to go out and put dirt on it. 
Not today. It's crappy outside, but you know. You can call it waterproof all you want. I ain't taking the chance. Mostly because I don't feel like spending money on electronics. That screwed in. Is it one more screw. And there's these takeoff pieces. Actually, we don't have any extras because, um, yeah, I think that's, uh, I think we're good. Yeah, because the two screws we have for the ones for the plastic, uh, plastic steering hubs. So, yeah, we're good. No extra pieces, wow. So I've got four caps, four pins, and two screws. And all that was replaced with the uh, the parts that we, we replaced it with. So hey, there we go. Front end is done. Good motion, good rebound, nice damping. Everything feels clean. Hinge pins. And... Blind hubs are good. Oh yeah. Yeah, there we go. So now we're ready to start on the back, which is gonna be pretty much the same. So let's flip this guy over. And I mean, if you can see, uh, we'll get it to kind of turn it this way. So you can see with the wide kit, like those back arms just pretty much just disappear. Um, because of the extra width. Um, turn around, look at it this way. Um, let's see. I'm working here. I'm working here. But looking at the, the back end of the truck, like, yeah, it's, uh, it doesn't add a lot, but it adds a pretty good bit. So, all right, so we need to pull this screw out right underneath here. And anyone that has put the Proline mounts on their trucks uh, so they can do different bodies and whatnot, you'll be very familiar with these screws because these are a part of that kit. Um, uh, when you put the, the Proline mounts on, this is definitely one of the screws you have to pull out to kind of hold those mounts into place. Um, which those mounts attach here and then then, then down here. Um, there we go. I've got that screw up. Go ahead and take these these other parts and get them out of the way since we don't need them. Drop them into my stand over there. Put this guy over here, um, and then we're gonna flip this guy over and pull this uh, back skid plate off. Same thing. Four screws. Easy peasy. Get those guys over there out of the way. And because a lot of these parts are plastic, guys, you definitely when you're when you're putting it back together, you don't want to torque down too hard. You can strip the plastic out, which yeah, yeah, not a good thing. Um, you can, like I said uh, before, you can use um, your fingernail polish definitely don't try to use Loctite on the plastic over time it will degrade the plastic and that's not fun for anybody okay what else am I missing oh yep, this piece forget about that and then this is you're gonna end up with the same same basic setup once we get this taken off the only thing you don't have on the back end of the truck are the uh, C hubs you just have the bearing carriers um, which that screw is just going to be a pain in the ass. All right, cool, good, cool story. Pop this guy off, and then we're going to see stuff fall out. So let's move this over. Yep, there we go. All right, so we got our back hub, uh, back uh, bumper off. Kick this over. Yep, all pulled off. Six screws total, and that guy comes off. Um, This is our screw that uh, holds that back bumper on. We got our plastic piece that goes over the hinge pins, and then the metal piece that goes over the hinge pins. Um, so, 
let's go ahead and disconnect our, we can go back to our smaller bit. Go ahead and disconnect this. Actually, let me go ahead and do these hubs first. So maybe, maybe we'll go ahead and do these hubs first. Then, so you know what, give me a tire. This might be easier. There we go. And then we'll just use the tire to whoever getting the hinge pins off. There they come. There it is. Okay, now we got it. It's much easier than using the pliers. So hey, we learned something. Let's use the tire instead of uh, a wrench to get the um, to leverage against the hinge pin, or not the hinge pin, the uh, the grub screw. Jeez. Pull that guy out. Pull this guy off. And that grub screw should be somewhere. Is it still in here? I really would prefer it not to be. Okay, so we'll just tilt this to get this uh, grub screw out. No, nope, not gonna come out. Okay, cool. That's that's kind of that kind of sucks. Let's put those over there. That over there. Oh, it almost came out. Hold on, we almost had it. Nope, not quite. There it goes. All right, we got our grub screw out. So we have those three pieces put together there. We're gonna go ahead and pull all this off. Let's see what I'm pulling here. Oh, drop that screw. This is for the lower arm hinge pin. Get that guy pushed out. There we go. These two go together. I'm going to pull these out. I don't need those right now. And then undo the, undo the shock here. Get that guy out of the way. shock move it now on the rear end I do use the inside um, shock slot bottom arm is off boom all right let's pull this hinge pin off this one for the upper hinge pin. I'm gonna put it over here on the other side of the the hub. Another thing, if you're pretty new at working on these things, I'm fairly new. I'm not gonna lie, you can probably already tell. Um, try to keep your parts somewhat organized as you take them off. Um, one thing that will help putting everything back together you know where everything goes etc etc so all right so this is our hinge pin for our upper arm get this guy pulled out and that's a takeoff so we can toss that guy over there don't need it all right let me pop this guy right back in here this is our wide max arm all right and then we can Pop this back in. And this one less thing to keep up with. Get in there. And we should be able to grab 
Yep, there it goes. <laughs> extra dirt in there. Jeez. I think this was an off road RC truck or something. Alright, so that goes on. We're good there. Alright, good deal. Oh, let's see. Let's, uh, we got our hub pulled. So let's pop our bearings. And again, check your bearings. Make sure they're clean. Everything's spinning like it should. You don't feel any grabbing or anything like that. These both, I mean, they're, they're both in great shape. A little bit of dirt there. Wipe that off. Um, and grab our arms. Oh, that's going to be the wrong one. Alright, so this is our correct arm. There we go. So we put this up here. Slide this pin through. That's going to be flush just like we want it. I'm going to take this pin. And we're going to get this guy put back into this arm. To get it to bite. There it goes. I said earlier, I'm kind of new at working on these trucks. I mean, it's definitely true um, to an extent. I mean, I've been messing around with Hobby RC for a while. I was out of it for about 10 years or so and just recently kind of got, got back into it. Um, man, I can tell you, um, after converting a an old Clodbuster to a Clodzilla 4, Oh uh, man, these uh, these newer trucks are a hell of a lot easier to work on, for sure. Um, a lot more parts uh, in a lot of cases, uh, but definitely still just significantly easier to work on, which is is kind of nice. All right, now we gotta get this pin. No, 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 do that. Oh, oh, thought we had it. Did not. Try this again. Which, by the way, if you do have the standard length um, CVDs installed, um, and you just buy the dog bones to convert to wide, like you basically it just sends you one dog bone like so, and then you have to rebuild or you know kind of build this piece. Which you know after the last two you probably already know. So um, let's uh, let's get this guy put in here. Let's get this bearing over it to hold this pin in place. Slide this guy through. Yeah, get that guy all the way down in there. There we go. Pop this guy into here. Let's just slide him in there. Okay, yep, he's in spot. And then we just got to make sure this bearing is flush. That's really going to be the big piece. Making sure that bearing is all the way in there. You don't want any any slop in that at all. Um, take your smaller bearing, slide it in through the side. All right, um, and then we're going to put our going to put our hub back on. Just turn that so it doesn't try to run off on us. And then. Uh, Get this guy started, which is grub screws. Very important because, uh, yeah, it should have just gone flying right off otherwise. Which is not a good time. 
or anybody. So we want to hold this to get it pushed through the Loctite. We're going to use the tire trick that we just learned. Put this tire on here. Get that on there. Good deal. And then we're going to get this guy torqued down like it should be. And that's it. All right. Good deal. Pop that guy back off. And now we're ready for our lower arm. So as you can see, this side is going to be much quicker than our last one. Uh, we don't need to put that pin in. We basically just need to set this guy real quick. And of course you want to make sure you have everything lined up. This, it should be... Okay, so our hinge pin is right here. Kick that guy through there. And then make sure it goes through all the way to the other side, flush. So it'll be good to go. Maybe if we can get it lined up. And that guy is in. So tighten this guy down. That pen doesn't go anywhere. Yep, I'm good to go. So I can put a little bit of torque on this guy. Let me get this guy pulled up here so maybe you guys can see a little bit. And it's biting, so now we can just tighten that down. Starting to bite, tighten down some, so I don't want to over tighten it. Let's get our dog bone lined up here. We can put this pin through and go ahead and reinstall or, or screw our uh, shock back in. And like I said, on the rear end, I like the shock to be on the inside hole. Again, um, some people would argue that was wrong. I don't believe that it is. I've seen great performance out of this thing with the shock on the inside hole. Um, also with the wide kit, um, one of the, the common, I guess, you know, quote unquote issues is you have a lot of sag in the back end of the truck where the back end sits lower than the front. Um, it's another reason to keep the shock in the uh, inside hole um, so that you have a more straight up and down um, uh, geometry with the shock. Okay, did we go in? Did we go in? No, just one side did. So. Now I think on the other side, I'm just going to put the shock back in first before I start doing the rest of this. Good gosh. It's the little ball ends that like to move around when you're trying to get it lined up. And bam, once they're straight, they just go right in. It's crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. So let's get this guy tightened down. Here we go. And then we'll have that shock installed. Our hub is installed. This side is much, much easier. All right, that's that's about as good as that's about where that's supposed to be. So let's just put that in there to hold that up. Not that it's terribly important that we do so, but now we've got one arm, and I mean, just for fun, you can look at. 
get you lined up here and look at the difference between the wide side and the not so wide side. So I should probably make sure the dog bones in the in the drive cup. That'd be a good idea. I hear it makes the truck go better. Vroom vroom. So now we're gonna do this side. Um, get this piece knocked out. So this is takeoff. So put it down on our takeoff file. Alright, so let's pull this pin. Undo our shock. Sheesh. Not too bad. I think we'll have this guy put back together and looking pretty here pretty soon. Yes, I do like my trucks to look pretty, but they do get ran quite a bit. It'd be nice if we could. We actually had some sun come out. I mean, shit, this time of year in Georgia, it's normally, you know, 60 degrees outside, but no, today it's like 35 and rainy and not fun. So, but that just means that. I'm not really missing out on running the trucks right now because the weather's crap anyway, so. Now these are supposed to, now the wide kit does come with the cold weather arms, which are supposed to be more resistant to the cold and whatnot, etc, etc, etc. So typically, um, these are going to hold up quite a bit better than... Um, you know, standard arms that are not really built for colder weather. Um, plastic pieces tend to get kind of brittle when um, when it's cold outside, so. And I did it again, forgot to use the wheel trick. That was a dummy. That was a dummy move. Another part, take off. And I can probably still use, no, I'm not, because if I do this, then it's just going to turn when I try to, oh no, we're good, I think we're good, yep, oh hey, that one was much easier, that's kind of scary, alright, there's our grub screw, man, we're doing good, getting stuff done, alright, now we just got to pop our pin out, Alright, we got our hub off. We're good. Go ahead and remove this guy. Remove our bearings. One bearing, two bearings, and another takeoff. Toss that in our takeoff pile. And let's pop this pin out. And we will be almost done with our last dog bone. Sit down the trash pile, but um, make sure this guy is turned. Ooh, hey, heard some grinding in there. You yep, got a little bit of dirt and stuff caked into that one. Get all that out of there. Oh yeah, that had a lot of nastiness in it. That's gross. All right, it's clean now. All right, so oh damn, fell out again. Let's do this again. Really? There we go. Get this pin dropped down in here. Maybe, possibly. This is the fun part, guys, is uh, getting these pins lined up. Just went through nice and clean. All right, let's make sure our bearings are good and clean. Yep, no grabbing. That's nice. Yep, good clean motion on there. Uh, we need to take off this arm. We have not taken off this arm yet. 
I'm all over the place, guys, so, um, if you're having a hard time keeping up, just tell me a second in the comments. Works for me. So, let's put our upper arm on. Get that out of the way. Take off. Woo! And. Get this guy put on. Come on, get your butt in there. And then. Put this piece on. something all right so got that upper arm back on so we're good there uh what's next we need our arm. more for the trash pile get those on there and which one was my upper it was this one In. Get this capture screw in here. I mean, as you can tell, back end is a bit easier, a little bit quicker. So we're kind of moving through this. We should be done for too long. And then we'll turn this guy over and check, see if we have any squat or. What we need to adjust, etc., etc., yada, yada, yada. Um, all right, so we'll go ahead and slap this on here. Get this. There we go. That guy's in. Let's get them pushed in nice and flush. All right, easy peasy. That is what I'm talking about. Get that dog bone put in there. Drop this guy on. The good thing about it, a lot of people say don't use aluminum parts, and for the most part, they are absolutely 100% right. Um, in the case of like these parts, the aluminum parts that we're putting on, I mean, these carry bearings, um, and you will see a lot more protection for your bearings um, when you have them in aluminum because um, you don't run the risk of. Um, You don't run the risk of uh, the plastic flexing and damaging the bearing, or uh, they're just a little bit better protected um, when you go this route. So, um, for the most part, yeah, you want to keep uh, aluminum parts to a minimum, but it does not hurt. I mean, if it carries a bearing, it's uh, it's, it's not a bad idea to have an aluminum piece in place. And you still have the flex from the arms and you know the bulkheads and whatnot because we're not overloading this thing on um we're not overloading this thing with aluminum so we should be good okay so our pin is in place i'm gonna have to adjust that a little bit once i get this grip screw started okay You want to keep your uh, your pen pretty even. There we go. And just so you don't have more pressure on one side of the pen than you do the other. So if you keep it fairly even, you should avoid that. All right, let's grab a tire. All right, so we have a tire on. Let's get this guy torqued in. That guy should not be coming anywhere. There we go. Alright. That guy is good and tight. 
We're now done with our tires until we are ready to put tires back on. Uh, we just need our upper arm now. Ooh. There we go. Yeah, I think I'm going to do what I said I should have done on the last one. I think I'm going to go ahead and put this. There for a second, I thought I was goofing up. Like, whoa, just kind of zoned out there. All right, cool. So let's, uh,. Get this uh, shot put into this inner hole. Get it lined up. Not having a good time. Did it go in? Yes, we are good. So let's grab our screw. Get that guy started. Tighten this guy up. supposed to so all right that guy's nice and tight now we're gonna let's get our dog bone in and attach this piece and we're gonna take our hinge pin slide through make sure it's all the way in nice and flush and then we'll go ahead and put this pin in to hold this in place Kinda, while we're tightening this one up, and you know we're about done um, with this conversion. So, oh, this guy's gonna have to stand up for this one. He's gonna make me work for it. That's fine. like we're supposed to. That guy's tightening up. Alright. Good deal. I right, got stuff falling down over here. Uh, that's why my wife has so much stuff shoved underneath my desk here. I just move a certain way and things just start falling out. Alright, so um, yeah, now we just got to put this back together and uh, <laughs> We're done. Uh, everything is in place. Diffs are nice and smooth. So let's put this guy back on. So this guy goes first. That says right. So there we go. You know how I know it's not right? Because that shit ain't fitting. Just kidding. We got it. And you're going to have a similar situation where you're going to have to pop this guy back in. So pop this guy underneath there. This guy is going to... Oh, this is probably going to be easier to do it this way. This guy should just slip right into that and pop that into place. And then we're going to, just like we did on the front end we're going to slip this guy in oh this guy does not slide in okay just kidding so let's uh let's get this guy put on here first and then we'll pop this stuff into place okay get this guy pushed back in there we go come on drop the screwdriver whoops So what's giving us a problem right now is this um, this piece of the bumper that slides into here. So we're just gonna 
attempt to snap this guy into place. But uh, it's going to be a bitch because that's what it's decided to do. so that thing sits like it's supposed to. We're gonna get this guy popped in. Hmm. This is just uh, interesting. Wow, having there it goes. Good gosh. Okay, now we got it popped in. So we can flip this guy back over and just hold this guy up into place. This is the screw we need. Do, 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 do. We are very close to being done. and this is going to hold this in place I feel it starting to kind of pull in everything like it should okay so that guy's good and tight not going anywhere everything's lined up pins are captured let's flip this guy over And uh, you're not seeing any squat right now, but hey, haven't put haven't put tires and a battery in it yet, so that's that's where we'll find out. So get these guys screwed back down in here. I'll lengthen this up some. Should line up, should just move right through everything. Hold a bumper in place up here. With a fairly long, healthy screw, so it can go through several of the components. Everything sounds. There's my, uh, there's my four. There's my four S. And yes, I do, you do use Traxxas batteries. You can go ahead and crack on me on that too. That's fine. All right. So we want the majority of our weight. These guys in like so. I'm kicking in a little bit there. All right, good deal. All right. Seems like we're good. Everything went back together like it should. Um, put this guy on the stand and uh, right after we do this uh, we're gonna put this guy on the stand and get the wheels put back on it um, get some pictures of this guy 
Yeah, I thought I was gonna forget about these, didn't you? I damn near did, not gonna lie. So let's, uh, so we're going to put this guy on the stand and uh, get the wheels put on it and see what we, uh, see how we look. All right, so we are finished with our wide max conversion. And as you can see, everything turned out perfect. We have no squat in the back. Um, now we just wait for the weather to clear up some and hopefully get to take this thing out and rip a little bit. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Please comment, like, subscribe. And like I said throughout most of the video, feel free to roast me because I am, even though I've messed with RC for quite a long time, I'm still a little bit of a rookie on these trucks, but everything on this guy turned out great. We have no squat, truck is sitting level. Um, we are good to go. Thanks everyone for watching. I know it was a long video. Uh, Y'all have a great day.